Good morning and welcome to BBTV. Without evidence as to why, traditionally, October has been a bad month for financial markets. The first question investors usually ask following a sell-off is whether this negative trend will persist or if it is an opportunity. This morning, I'm joined by one of our fund managers, Stefan Isaacs, who will help us to understand a bit more about what's happening at the moment in fixed income markets. Good morning, Stefan. Hi, Pilar. Let's start looking at Europe. The month brought evidence of a slowdown with disappointing growth data for the third quarter, as well as a confirmed downward trend on the PMIs. After this difficult year for European credit, what can we expect? So you're right. Uh, the Q3 data was disappointing for Europe. Um, quarter on quarter growth came in at about 0.2%, which annualizes to less than 1% for the year, which is disappointing on the back of the growth we saw in 2017. It was always likely there was going to be something of a slowdown this year versus last. But nonetheless, I think policymakers probably would have been hoping for a little bit more, as, as indeed we were. Um, the reality is, though, for investment grade, it's, it's not a disaster. These are, these are companies with very strong balance sheets, and they, generally speaking, can cope with it. And the fact that spreads have continued to, to widen this year from the, the tights that we saw in February or March arguably um, suggests that there's a much better entry point for the asset class. What we do need to watch very closely is, though, the, the, the trend of that, of that data. If it was to continue to, to weaken from here and markets were to worry about uh, a recession going into 2019, that would be a concern and perhaps uh, wouldn't be priced uh, in, into uh, European credit spreads. But that isn't our core view. And so, so I would suggest that, that right now spreads are looking far more attractive than they, than they have been for the, the, the majority of 2018. Okay. October also brought a risk of sentiment in US high yield. Uh, so far, the year's most favored fixed income asset class. Yields are back to 7% levels, right? Um, what happened and uh, can be this considered as an attractive entry point? So I, I guess the volatility in uh, risk assets um, hadn't helped high yield in, in, in October. We saw clearly uh, a route for the tech sector in, in the equity market and that spilled over to other riskier assets like US high yield. And remember, US high yield had uh, a very good run. As you mentioned, it's one of the better performing fixed income asset classes uh, this year. So valuations perhaps were a little bit stretched and, and meant that uh, once you saw a flight from the asset class, that the returns were, were negative. Uh, the, the reality is though, uh, as we've gotten back to 7%, I think that that's starting to look a lot more attractive for investors in, mm -hmm. in the US. So I think that that uh, accompanied with the fact that technicals are, are, are a lot more favorable. And fundamentally, those companies are still doing well. Their earnings have continued to grow. And actually, as a consequence, leverage has, has come down. Interest coverage has gone up. There is a lot more that is favorable for the asset class at, at, at this sort of level going into 2019. And as long as you you believe that the economy holds up in the US uh, next year, which is our, our central forecast, then I think that uh, you can be a lot more constructive about, about US high yield than we've been able to be for certainly uh, 2018 uh, until now. And from that technical perspective that you just mentioned, um, October's new high yield issues in the US uh, were the lowest since 2009, and the US leveraged loan market is now bigger than the US high yield market. Uh, is the US high yield market changing, and um, is this being caused by companies uh, seeing the, the end of the cycle close? So there's been a big trend that we've seen, frankly, for a few years now, and if anything, it's accelerated this year uh, for high-yield companies uh, or, or leveraged finance companies to move away from issuing high-yield bonds and, and utilizing the leveraged loan market, especially in the US. And, and, and that, that trend looks perhaps set to continue in a world where investors fret about rising uh, interest rates. Uh, so that technical has been and continues to be very supportive for the US high yield bond market. It's also supportive for, for European high yield as well. We've seen net negative new issuance in, in, in the US. So when you think about the money that's coming back to the asset class, either from companies repaying debt or the income that the asset class generates, you've actually seen more of that than you've seen new issuance to the market. So from a technical 
perspective, that's been really important. And then the other element that we look at is dealer inventories. So how much of these bonds are uh, investment banks holding on their balance sheets? And again, that's that's at the lows of the year as well. So from a technical perspective, the market is, is very well supported. Uh, there, there are some structural factors here as well. But the, the reality is that um, these things tend to, to, to move in phases and uh, it looks like it's setting up the, the high yield market along with valuations for uh, a much better entry point that we've seen for most of uh, 2018. Well, thank you very much, Stefan. We will be paying attention to other events this week. We look out for the third quarter GDP data in Japan, the US retail sales, and the CPIs for October in US and the Eurozone. Thanks for watching us today and have a great week.